in the pale light of an early dawn. But not to Muhammad Ali, formerly Cassius Clay, the second youngest man ever to become heavyweight champion of the world. While the metropolis sleeps, he's whisked away from his hotel up the mall and past Buckingham Palace. He goes over roads as deserted as they must have been when the last heavyweight champion to defend his title in Britain, Tommy Burns, saw them 58 years before. 24-year-old Ali and his sparring partner Jimmy Ellis, who defeated him as an amateur in their hometown of Louisville, Kentucky, pound their Hyde Park beat. Angelo Dundee from Miami Beach, Florida, manager and trainer of a succession of world title holders, directs operations as Ali goes into reverse, part of his preparation for fleet-footed boxing on the retreat. Fighters London, though, lies east of Piccadilly. In the more homely surroundings of the old Kent Road, Ali's challenger, British and Empire champion Henry Cooper, goes with his manager, Jim Wicks, and his trainer, Danny Holland, to his cramped first-floor gymnasium at the Thomas of Beckett. It's 12 years since Cooper and his twin brother, George, first set foot in it as hopeful young pugilists. The ex-plasterer no longer sharpens his left hook on a member of the family. The champion, as a visitor, just can't get away from the crowd. His admirers flock around him as he arrives for an afternoon training session at the Parachute Battalion headquarters at White City. Though Muhammad Ali was an outcast in his homeland, he was a major draw in Canada and Europe. His second fight with Henry Cooper drew 46,000 fans to Highbury Stadium, the home ground of the Arsenal Football Club. Here in London, he was able to concentrate on his title defence without the social and political pressures that he faced at home. Now comes the time for the moment of truth. Preceded by the Union Jack, Cooper makes his way through the 38,000 Highbury throng after being delayed in his dressing room for 10 minutes, waiting for a passage to be cleared to the ring. can his thoughts be at this moment? Is this the setting for triumph or just another punishment pit? Before he has time to ponder, tight-lipped Ali is following the star-spangled banner into the blue rope square. This is the final build-up, the crowning moment to a presentation yet to be bettered anywhere in the world. sliding gracefully away. This is the expected early pattern. Cooper, on a 50,000 pound pay night, knows there's so much more at stake. When they met three years ago, disaster came Cooper's way in the fifth round. Badly cut eyes cost him dearly after he'd left hook early to the canvas. And surely, he must be thinking, the longer the fight goes, the greater the risk of it happening again. Ali, for all his superior speed and greater reach, knows well enough the danger lurking in Cooper's left hand. So he clinches the moment he thinks it's coming, but he clinches easily, clearly content that his stone advantage and weight will keep him in command in the inside exchanges. <laughs> Cooper, trying to overcome the problem of a shorter reach, lunges with his left hand to the body in an effort to get to his man.
Just watch the way Ali circles gracefully away. His hands held low are always in a position either to defend or to attack. This, of course, means that his opponent has to attempt to make the fight. Cooper has to try to be the aggressor all the time. himself. The punches flash out of lightning speed. And although they might not be particularly damaging ones, he's making them count. Watch also the way he slides away from those super jacks. He makes them miss by a fraction, but that's sufficient. Even if they land, he rides them enough to take away the sting. Cooper knows he has to force the issue, but it isn't easy against a rival as slippery as this. At the end of the first round, there's good reason for him to be happy. It's a promising start. Round two. And Ali goes into the same routine. Again, Cooper has to try to be the aggressor. his gloves, inviting Cooper to come forward, but the British champion is even more watchful than he was in the first round. Ali rides one jab and parries another, then he gets home with the right hand. These punches don't look particularly heavy because of the speed with which he throws, but with more than 14 stone behind them, there's no doubt anybody would know when they arrive.
Cooper sinks two left hooks to the ribs, and once again he tries to pin Arnie to a corner, but he slips up at almost ridiculous ease. Thank <laughs> you. 
once again, Ali had proved too fast and too strong for the battered people. Ali had looked untroubled against the Englishman, and his reign as champion looked set to continue for some time to come. After Henry Cooper, Muhammad Ali returned to England 11 weeks later and knocked out another Englishman, Brian London, in three rounds. Then a month later went to Germany to fight local champion Carl Mildenberger. A lightning right-left combination sends Mildenberger to the canvas. The referee gives the challenge of a mandatory eight count, and Ali moves in to finish it. Champion Muhammad Ali all over Carl Mildenberger here in round eight. became one of the most dominant heavyweight champions. He also became one of the most unpopular. Uh, he didn't behave in the way the American public wanted their black heavyweight champions to behave. Their model was Joe Louis, and um, that was not the way that Muhammad Ali behaved. Another guy, another one. He was the fastest heavyweight of all time, and the most durable. At this time in his career, he was invincible, but he was not perfect. Ali most probably had more flaws than any other fighter. He made lots of mistakes, but I said just that brilliant speed and um, that will to win uh, it was, um, it was, just, it was just too much for anybody to handle. Well, according to traditional uh, boxing techniques, he was uh, he done everything wrong. Really, uh, he was uh, he didn't throw any punches to the body, especially just a head hunter. Uh, he couldn't uh, in fight, couldn't fight in close. He dropped his hands down by his sides. He would never very rarely keep his hands up. He virtually used his, uh, his foot speed uh, and his fanta fantastic anticipation to get away from punches. I mean, uh, he'd make a mistake, he'd be there one second, then he wouldn't be there at all. Ali tells Frazier that didn't hurt. Getting hit by uh, an opponent is the worst thing to do. He got hit and laughed him off. Um, he was just so tough at a young age that uh, he thought he was invincible. And at a young age, he was invincible, but it was just a, he was a freak of nature. And this freak of nature was about to produce the most perfect performance of his life. 